Today's um, stream is going to be about how do you know if he or she is the one. So let that, let's dive in. So this is what we're going to do is we're going to share first four biblical principles that I feel like we need to subscribe to before we can dive into the practical. And then I'm going to share 13, it might get to 14 practical pastoral examples. They're not in the Bible but they are what we've seen in our life and what we've seen with other people's lives of something that I believe it will help you to know if that person is the one. So we're going to get through the more, more foundational thing and I really want you guys to pay attention to that because I believe if you don't have the proper framework for this, you are not going to be able to then, because everybody wants to know like concerning the preferences yeah. instead of the principles. Come on somebody, we need the principles not just the pre pre preferences. Yep. So what is the first principle of how do you know if that person so, is the one? Yeah, number one, the Bible actually focuses more on walking in purity than on how one should date. Now, when it comes to purity, you must understand is that purity is more than being a virgin. Because virginity is physical, purity is emotional and mental. Actually, purity is a heart issue. The Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 4 that to he who, he who ascends the hill of the Lord must have pure hearts and clean hands. Mm -hmm. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, He says that if those of pure heart will see God. So purity is to be without mixture. It's meaning not allowing the world to get inside of you. You actually, you're a virgin until you get married, but you're pure for the rest of your yeah. life. And so God actually wants you to focus more on your purity than on your romance and your relationship. And that should start right now. That should not start when you get married. That should start right now. Whether you're single, whether you're ready to mingle, whether you're not ready to mingle, yeah. whether you're coming out of a heartbreak or, or broken relationship, whatever the situation is, the foundation of relationships according to the Bible is purity. Now, one thing that I've learned about purity is that purity is not a point you cross. Meaning, oh, I no longer watch pornography. Yeah, yeah. I no longer, you know, have a wandering eye. I no longer undress women for men or for women. I no longer watch erotic, you know, novels. Now I am pure. That's a point. But purity is not that. Purity is a pursuit after God. So if you stop pursuing, you're no longer pure. Even if you're not watching pornography, you're not masturbating, you're not fornicating, you're not committing adultery, you are not pure. So purity is a pursuit. Purity is a heart issue and yeah, that is the yeah, foundation yeah, yeah. of relationships. And I love how you say, how you mentioned that the purity is a heart issue because our goal is to be pure in the heart mm -hmm. and out of the heart everything else flows. The pure life, uh, what we watch, uh, how we date, uh, what we allow ourselves and uh, so on. And so principle number two is the Bible focuses more on being the right person uh, than uh, finding the right person. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? Uh, well, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's actually harder because w many times we want to focus so much on finding the right guy, finding the, the man who's going to love me. But what about you? Have you thought that God wants to prepare you mm -hmm. uh, more than He wants to prepare someone else, even though, yes, God wants to prepare someone else for you, but He wants you to be the right person before you're going to find the right person. Because if you are the wrong person, meaning bad character, can you imagine if you find a, a guy with a good character, it's going to be very difficult for, li for, for him to live with you. Now, the Bible actually has very little to say on who you should date or who you should mm -hmm. marry. But the Bible has so much to say about yeah. who you should be as a Christian. Mm -hmm. So, if the story of Adam, and would you hand me my uh, single Ready to Mingle book? Yes, I'm going to take a sir. little promotion right now. Check out the single Ready to Mingle book. You can get it on Amazon or download it on my website free of charge. I go through the story of Adam and it's honestly like mm -hmm. it's been my like example for young people on what they should do with their season of singleness. Adam first was plant put into the garden by God and Adam knew God. Adam had a job and then God gave Adam a wife. And so this example is perfect for us that before you find the right person, make sure in the very areas you want to have this person that you are good in those areas. Yeah. For example, I want him, you know, I want him to love God or I want her to love God. The best way to get the person who loves God is to be the person who loves God. The reason why is because if you don't love God, you won't settle for yeah. somebody who doesn't love God. 
you will not you will not find somebody and they will not go with you if you don't love God. You know, I want them to uh, take care of me. Great. Do you take care of yourself? Do you take care of your health? Do you take care of your finances? Do you take care of your car? Is your bedroom clean? Okay. Is the sink clean? <laughs> okay. So do you take care? Are you a person that uh, takes care of yourself? Because if you don't, you will settle for somebody who is not yeah. taking care of you. So most people don't realize is that we we like and we desire somebody who is opposite of us but we usually end up somebody who has a similar personality or similar character and so it's very important that as a Christian you must understand God wants to develop a fruit of the Spirit in you. Many Christians work too much on their desires and their expectations and too little on their preparation. It doesn't mean that you'll ever be ready for marriage but God wants you to raise your preparation and honestly lower your expectation mm -hmm. when you go into a relationship. What is the third principle? Um, yeah, principle number three is uh, the Bible limits our options to actually only in the Lord when it comes to who is the right person that you should be with. Now, would you read the scripture for us in? Yes, Second um, Corinthians. So actually, it's First Corinthians seven thirty nine. Okay. Uh, First Corinthians, First Corinthians seven thirty nine. Wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband dies, she's at liberty to marry, uh, to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. Come on, somebody, drop that in the chat. Only in the Lord. So only in the Lord. <coughs> Let's do it again. Only in the Lord. The Bible limits our options as Christians to only in the Lord. Meaning this person has to be in the Lord. Not just in the church, not just um, they will start coming to church, not just, oh I just led them to Jesus yesterday, but they have to be in the Lord. Only in the Lord. That is the right person that you should be with. You can marry whoever you want, the Bible says, but as long as they're only in the Lord. The second verse that I would like to share in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, and if you can read that verse um, right here. Yeah. Um, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? So, this verse a lot of times is used for actually to say that Christians cannot have demons but this actually verse in the context it's talking about being unequally yoked together with unbelievers not in the sense that you cannot work with unbelievers, you cannot be friends with unbelievers but that you cannot enter into a covenant mm -hmm. with unbelievers. Now for those of you who got saved and your husband or your wife is not a believer, this is not referring to that. This is referring to people that are believers who are about to enter into mm -hmm. a relationship mm -hmm. and they already know that the other person is not a believer. They're not in the Lord. They're not grounded in Christ. They do not know Jesus. They do not love Jesus and so that person is already no-go. That's in the Bible. Now let's dive to fourth principle and then we're going to get to some practical things. So the Bible doesn't teach that God plays lottery uh, with relationships. Mm -hmm. He gives liberty to marry whom we wish. Again, I'm going to read the verse in 1 Corinthians that Lana read 7, mm -hmm. 39. It says, if her husband dies, so this applies to a widow, but this also applies to anybody who is single. Mm -hmm. She is at liberty. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat. At liberty. Tell it to the neighbor below you and above you. At liberty. I want to emphasize that. Mm -hmm. She is at liberty. Okay. Not only he is at liberty, she is at liberty. At liberty means she is free mm -hmm. to marry whom she wishes. Somebody drop that in the chat. Whom she wishes. Okay. Why is that important? It does not say here, listen to this very carefully, for those of you in there who believe that God is the one that chooses your spouse. Listen to this. The Bible says she is at liberty 
to whom be married. It doesn't say to whom God chooses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to whom she chooses, wishes, mm -hmm. to whom she wishes. You are free to marry who you like. <laughs> nah, Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I know a lot of people, uh, they really love to spiritualize this aspect. Over spiritualize. Over spiritualize, yeah. Thinking that I have to know if God wants me to marry this person. But there is only one criteria. Is that person in the Lord? Mm -hmm. Does he or she walk with God? Does he or she have a relationship with the Lord? Then you can marry if you like that person. Mm -hmm. That's how simple it is. It's very simple. That's it. So, um, young man. If that young lady um, is in the Lord and you wish to be married to her, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? <laughs> um, and if you're a young lady, you know, it's time to maybe send him this video <laughs> and maybe crop this very part where this could be applied to men as well. This is not just for mm -hmm. women. Imagine yeah, yeah, women yeah. at the time did not have rights mm -hmm. to, for Paul to say for a woman, who's a widow. Mm -hmm. He says, you can marry. Listen, girl, yeah, you can marry yeah. whoever you like. <laughs> That's amazing. Because a lot of people, this is this stereotype, this this mental like um, stronghold that exists, especially in charismatic Pentecostal circles where people feel like um, you, God chooses for you. Remember, share your story. I know you already shared it once, how you were expecting for Angel of God to speak to you. To if, confirm. To confirm if I was the one. And what did you do? How did you decide that I was the so, one? So, uh, and, and I see some of you maybe are chatting right now or saying, well, but you need to pray about it. No, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, uh, prayer is not what's going to bless your marriage. It's obedience. If you're praying for your husband, but you're, d you're dating a drug dealer, Th your prayer doesn't matter. You're disobedient. And a lot of people, they pray for things where they should have been obedient. Oh God, show me if this is That's the right good. person. Yeah. And, and the homeboy is literally a pot dealer. He's, <laughs> he, deals, he deals weed and he doesn't go to church. He doesn't serve God. And you're saying, Lord, confirm this is my husband. Like you're disobedient. But once you're obedient, you don't need to ask God for audible voice. Now, can God give you an audible voice confirmation? Yes. Can He send you an angel to confirm? Yes. Can He give you a dream? Yes. Can He give you absolutely nothing? Yes. Because He gave you a word. So in His word, He made it very clear, only in the Lord, mm -hmm. whomever she wishes. Mm -hmm. These are the two very simple things that, that we can now, I'm going to share, we're going to share right now, practical things that you should avoid, red flags that you should avoid as a pastoral advice or preference. But these are, again, these are not necessarily in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm reminded of David when David committed adultery and Nathan came to David and he said this, he says, because you disobeyed the word of the Lord. It's interesting. God never told David not to have adultery verbally. He said it in His Word and God mm -hmm. judged him because of what David did not do according to His Word. God clearly gives us the green light if the person is in the Lord. Now, uh, when, we were, when we were in a relationship and you know, Lana was in the Lord, I was in the Lord, I was seeing her already and I liked what I was seeing. I liked what I was getting to know. I wished to be married to her. But I did not have or feel this liberty. In fact, I felt that God needs to give me a supernatural confirmation that she is my wife because I am a preacher and because special. I am a pastor. And I was special. <laughs> so I think a little bit of pride was going in. But the real reason is that because I heard so many testimonies where the angel of God came mm -hmm, and confirmed mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the audible voice came in. So I was like, I'm not worse than those men of God. God should confirm it to me. And so instead of proposing to my wife, what I was doing is I was waiting for an angelic sign. I was waiting for this divine like pro prophetic word or, or some kind of a really powerful confirmation. And uh, what happened? <laughs> So I went to TJ Maxx um, to get some stuff. I meet oh. this guy that I went to school with and, um, and you know, I'm like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? And he's like, I'm married. And I was like, you're married already? <laughs> and I was like, how did that happen? 
And so I don't tell him that I am in a relationship and that I'm waiting for a confirmation. What I'm just telling him is, um, I'm asking him his story. His story. I said, how did you propose to her? And he says, I proposed in the airport. And I said, was that planned? He says, no, we went on a mission trip. I liked her. They didn't even go out on a mission trip for seven day mission trip. Mission trips are dangerous. A lot of stuff happens in mission trips. So I know quite a few couples that got <laughs> hooked up on mission trip. So he says, on the mission trip, it made, became obvious. I want to be with this person. And I felt that this person wanted to be with me. And so I asked him, so did you like get a sign from God? He says, no, I mean, she's serving God. I'm serving God. We like each other. I mean, this guy went radical, okay? He didn't even talk to his parents or her <laughs> parents. Like on the way back, he found a string in the airport, got on his <laughs> knee and proposed to her with not even a ring, a string. And the girl said, yes. So he's saying this to me and I'm thinking in the back of my head, he's an idiot. I'm like, what kind of a guy would do that? And as I'm thinking those thoughts, I get this impression that I'm the idiot. <laughs> because here I have the person that I want to be with. You know, I've talked to my parents, I've talked to my pastor, I've talked to her pastor. I, I crossed all the dots. And, and we already were dating. And we're already dating. Yeah. It was official. And, and then I'm still waiting for some kind of a sign. And so right there in that moment, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, I made a decision this Saturday or this Friday, I'm going to propose. So I tell Lana that I'm going to go and visit her on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, for, you know, she lived in Vancouver, Washington. I lived in Tri-City. So I said, I'm going to go visit you on Saturday. But then I called this ring place. I asked him to prepare the ring by Friday. And I came on Friday at her workplace and I proposed in front of her co-workers in the workplace and I've never looked back and I'm so glad that I did that and this verse later on became the confirmation yeah, for me yeah. that <coughs> she is at liberty to marry whomever she wishes mm -hmm. only in the Lord now mm -hmm. I understand I've opened a lot of can of worms where a lot of people are like oh praise God you know my dr uh, my uh, drug you know addicted or maybe porn watching or abusive boyfriend is Christian and I like him I want to get married to him so I'm gonna go now and get married you mm -hmm. know my parents mm -hmm. don't approve yeah, but no. it doesn't matter so right now we're gonna deal with some other things that we believe as pastors and as your online friends maybe um, that you have to watch for. Yeah. Now if you are married right now and you're gonna look at these red flags and you're like, oh shoot, I made a wrong decision. Uh, you did not make a wrong decision, okay? The person that you're married with is the person you need to be with. You mm -hmm. don't need to go right now escape this marriage because you're married and you realize every single thing on this list is wrong because two wrongs do not make one right. Yeah. So keep on being with that person. But all of you single people, we can make it, you can do it better by making a decision that will honor Christ mm -hmm. in a very, very powerful way in your life that I believe will affect you in a great way. So. You want to add something? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to add actually something. For me personally, I, I was thinking about that and thinking, oh, how cool would that be if an angel of the, ro the Lord would actually tell my husband that oh, I am wow. his wife. I had those thoughts, but then I kind of changed my mind because I was thinking about it and I'm like, that is kind of scary. It's, I have more respect for him because it was his choice, mm. not Angel's choice. I was thinking about it and fire. I was like, oh my gosh, that's kind of scary. Now, if something goes wrong in our relationships, uh, we have hardships in our marriage or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And now this man who received a uh, word from an angel that I'm his wife, gonna go back waiting on that angel to fix things or to, mm -hmm. you know, and that would be a very, um, I would have a hard time respecting that kind of a man to tell you honestly. And I'm so glad that he's a very decisive man who can take this kind of decisions. I mean, looking at the word of God and uh, saying, okay, she's in the Lord and I'm just going to make my own decision and I'm going to propose to her. So. And definitely I had peace about it. Yeah, so it wasn't like, yeah. you know, I was and I was not against God's will. There was no red flags yeah. that we are going to be mentioning right yeah. now that. Yeah, there was no there was no red flags. And it's what I want to highlight also is that 
I actually was convicted about that. I felt like when I was praying to the Lord and I was saying, Lord, you know, who would you want me to marry? And I, I felt like it was, it was kind of crazy. I felt like the Lord was saying, hey, uh, I already chose my bride. You need to choose yours. <laughs> That's a uh, good one. It's, it's you who's going to live with her, not me. I mean, yes, of course, the Lord's going to live with us. So in that regard, that's what that's what I meant in the sense that I'm going to be the yeah. one married to her. Mm -hmm. And so and I really felt that, um, you know, then we take responsibility for those decisions instead of because I heard mm -hmm. people who go to the prophet again, no judgment to those yeah. who go to the prophets to get a confirmation. But they go to a prophet, you know, and say, prophet, who should I marry? And then, you know, the prophet chooses um, a person for them and then mm -hmm. they get married. And when something doesn't work out, they blame the prophet or they blame God. Look, you sent me this wrong person. And so in order to avoid this, I think this is what you need to do is you need to follow God's Word. Yeah. You need to follow common sense, which we're, we're going to talk good. about in just next mm -hmm. few minutes. And then you need to follow wise counsel. Can we say that again? Three things. Follow God's Word. What does God's Word say? Purity is more important. What is the second thing God's Word says? You need to work on yourself more than you're trying to work on the list that you're trying to find this magic person. Mm -hmm. What is the third thing God's Word says? Is that you need to look only with those who are in the Lord. What is the fourth thing God's Word says? You actually have the total freedom to marry whomever you like. That means attraction has to be there. Yes. That yes. word wish Absolutely. is an attraction. That means yes. you have to have a little spark. There has to be this click Absolutely. That, that is there. So they are in the Lord. But see, there's, there's like billions of people in the Lord. Not every person you're going to marry because we don't do polygamy, okay? So we do only one person. So how would you <laughs> from the Lord go to they are with me? They have to be the one that you wish to be with, meaning you some kind of a spark is there. Some there has kind of to a be a desire to be with that person. Hey. Mm. <laughs> Come on, somebody, drop that a fire emoji. For those all the single people, <laughs> receive that right now. Amen. Amen. So yeah, there has to be a, this desire to be with that person. Yeah. So practically, to to narrow everything down, is that you you find that right person by following what God's word says by following common sense, which we're going to talk about in a second, and then by following the wise counsel of people um, mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And this way you'll be able to, to really kind of mm -hmm. make the right decision. Now, before we share the 13 flags that red you, flags. Uh, red flags, um, we want to invite everybody. We see more people tuning into YouTube right now. Uh, those of you, could you help us out right now and hit thumbs up. If you are re-watching this, let us know where you're re-watching from in the comments. Stay engaged in the comments even if you're re-watching. If you're re-listening this on the podcast during workout or a train ride or whatever, we welcome you. Don't forget to leave a positive review on, review on where you're consuming this content. Thank you guys so much. And those of you on Facebook, don't forget to share. Everybody on Instagram and on TikTok, we're also on YouTube. Now, 13 red flags that you are with the wrong person mm -hmm. right now. What is the first one? So number one is the relationship with God is not a priority for that person. When God is not the most important for that person, it's mm -hmm. a red flag. Mm -hmm. If you are the <coughs> most important person for the person you are with, that's, that's a red flag. Scary. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Mm -hmm. You know, I always told even my wife that, you know, I love Jesus more than I love you. And because of that, I will love you more every single year as we grow together. Yeah, yeah. I think when we understand this truth, it's, it, it doesn't become scary. It actually liberates us mm. and makes us trust that person. If when I was single and I was praying, um, God, would you please give me a husband that will love you more then he will love me. Mm. And that's exactly what wow. I got. And I am so thankful to God that I, you know, prayed those prayers and I, uh, my mindset was correct in this area to understand that a person needs to be attached to God more than anything before he's attached to you. So ladies, good prayer to pray. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, Lord, send me a Mr. Handsome, <laughs> send me a person that loves you more than and he I will love me. And I also got the Mr. Handsome. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> So number, two. number two, actions and words don't match. That's a big one. That's a character flaw. Yeah. And even if that person is in the Lord, if what they say and what they do, I'm not talking about once or twice, mm -hmm. but you're noticing pattern. there's a pattern. This person says one thing, does another. They make promises they don't keep. Mm -hmm. They keep breaking their uh, their their oaths, their their commitments. Um, you're dealing with a person that either is immature, likes to be admired for the words he says, but doesn't have the character. 
to live out his commitments to me it's a huge huge red flag number three um if she or he has uh close friends that are not committed to the lord and i think this one is actually huge because this is how you can actually see with whom that person is more comfortable with mm -hmm. with people who are uh, more secular or with godly people and that's a very huge sign to see who the person is really uh, really is it's important mm -hmm. that we always have non-christian friends but if your closest and your best friends and all of them are not <coughs> believers mm -hmm. and you feel very comfortable and you don't seem to click with believers to me that's a huge red, a flag. red flag yeah number four uh, if a person, he or she, guy. more of a guy, but sometimes <laughs> she has a wandering eye. What do you have to say so about that? Uh, a wandering eye, it's when a person is constantly, it's when a guy is constantly checking out other girls. Mm -hmm. um, I would add to that also following an Instagram. Oh, yes. Ooh, this it. is huge. Like Come on, go Ladies, ahead. Ladies, I have to say Release it. it. If a, if a guy is interested in you, I beg you, make sure you go through his followers and see everyone who, who he is following. Big, big, uh, very important, <laughs> okay? It's, it's very important. That way you can actually see if a person, if a guy is like, okay, looking at an other girls and he's, uh, or you can even tell if he has an issue with lust or issue with pornography. Maybe he doesn't follow like, you know, porn uh, stars on Instagram, but you can kind of see who, you know, maybe those celebrities that are half naked and uh, you can tell if the person has issue with lust. Some, somebody <laughs> said that he was following a lot of prostitutes on his Instagram, a wandering eye when he follows Instagram models. To me, I think it's supposed to be a red flag when a believer, mm -hmm. a, a young man, um, man of purity is following female models. Mm -hmm. female uh, workout, uh, working Absolutely. out um, trainers. And because, I mean, all of the working out trainers, I mean, it's, it's, it's soft porn pretty much and stuff. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you girls can follow, but, um, but for a guy to follow as somebody with, with tight or pants. Or Hollywood stars. Yeah, and that, exposing mm -hmm. their, their breasts and everything. And, and it's just to stay uh, relevant mm -hmm. or to, oh, it's not a big deal. I'm just my friends you know, <laughs> and stuff. So, um, uh, to That's me, it's a just a big, big, yeah. big deal. I'm not saying that as a girl you should control, but you should definitely, you, sh you can't ignore that. Take a note. Yeah, yeah. you, you, you got to take a note. You got to, uh, you got to see that because that, uh, that is a big sign. And so, um, number sign, five. Sign num number five. He or she has uh, recently gotten out of uh, a relationship and they didn't heal yet. And so, and this is deals with the person who just broke up recently. <laughs> my personal encouragement is for people to take at least six months six to twelve mm -hmm. months depending on the depth and the closeness of the previous relationship especially if the previous relationship ended in immorality or fornication like there needs to be repentance there needs to be um inner healing even sometimes yeah. deliverance and when the person jumps out the reason why it's a red flag is because you don't really know if the person loves you or if the person uses you as a band-aid when they're jumping into a relationship with you right away what if they say okay, I just had a, a big breakup and this person is giving me this attention and they're helping me to heal. What do you say about that? I wouldn't say that it's always a bad thing. I would consult um, counselors, mentors, to kind of monitor this person's heart because I, I can't, I know some people who got married like that mm -hmm. and honestly they have a thriving great <laughs> relationship. They still had to deal with those issues <laughs> but to say mm -hmm. that that this is healthy or this is wise, it is not. And so because a lot of times you know you're dealing with this hurt and you're dealing with this thing and then three, four, five months later you actually have withdrawals and you actually want to go back to the person that you broke up with. Like and I'll, I'll be candid and honest, I've had a relationship before I met Lana. It was a dating relationship with uh, a young gal from, from our church and I broke up with her. Uh, a few months later, I went back to the same relationship. Even though we didn't fit together, it, didn't, it wasn't for me and it wasn't, I wasn't for her. But the emotional attachment. But the emotional right. attachment drew it back. The worst thing would have happened is for me to go to another relationship because I would have missed this person and go back. You don't, you know, when you this when you when the guitar stops playing music, the strings are not removed. 
just because you walked away, it doesn't mean all the strings are gone. So it takes time. Time is the great revealer. And so, and the person who just broke up or separated, please go into a healthy small group, go into relationship if you're a woman with other women, get a counselor, go into church, find a good hobby, begin to rebuild yourself. Don't jump into another relationship without learning the lessons that you had to learn. You have to learn even if it was not your fault because statistics says your next relationship, marriage, after the divorce, the chances of it end up in ending in divorce is higher than the first one. So the idea that, I, oh, I learned so fast that I'm going to jump into a next relationship is, is actually baloney. Yes. It's not how this works. You didn't learn anything because statistics says that you go back into actually worst case, not better case. And so I would really encourage to take yeah. time to pause and don't jump to be in a relationship with somebody. Or, like, or for example, going into dating with somebody whose divorce is not finalized. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I think that's a big no. It's just 100%. That's a big no. Oh, we're, we're still finalizing, you know, or it's been it's been finalized. You need to cut the cut the cord. This cord has to be cut. Person has to deal with that stuff first before they go into the next relationship. To me, that's a big red flag. Red flag number six. Number six. A person shows signs of controlling or abusive behavior. This is pretty self-explanatory, but I think it has to be mentioned because a lot of people miss those signs, especially the signs of control. I mm -hmm. think this is. Um, when a person is controlling, even if it's like already in dating, you can see the signs of control. If a person doesn't like you to hang out with your friends that you used to have, mm -hmm. or a person constantly showing signs that they only want to be with you, only th you are theirs, you are mm -hmm. their world. This is actually very unhealthy because uh, later on when you marry that kind of a person, you're going to be very miserable. That person will g will take another level of control and will be um, sometimes it, it gets out of out of control. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, as, as well, what I would want to mention is there is a difference between love mm -hmm. and obsessive love. Mm -hmm. When a person has an obsessive love, they don't love you. They are actually having a problem and they are possessing you. They are trying to mm -hmm. control you and that is very, very <coughs> dangerous. And so we have to be very careful because that becomes extremely toxic. At first, actually, if you have had a problem with, you know, having mm -hmm. somebody love you, like you will actually fall, fall prey to that and you'll be like, man, this is so amazing. Yeah. I, I am yeah. wanted. Yeah. I yeah. am desired mm -hmm. and everything. But in reality, mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -hmm. When the person is obsessed with you, they will become possessive of you. Mm -hmm. Here are the six characteristics of obsessive love. Mm -hmm. Obsessive love is when the person cannot live without you when the person demands unreasonable amounts of time and when the person ignores the other aspects of their own life to be with you, mm -hmm. when the person shows jealousy toward anything and any activity that compels for your attention, that competes for your attention, when the person follows you, checks up on you when yeah. you're not together and obsessive love begins with mm -hmm. an intense motion, intense emotion, flattery and, atten and attention but yeah. slowly yeah. it grows into unhealthy possessiveness of you. Yeah, yeah, that's big. I think love, it's, it's completely opposite. Love always gives freedom, trust, a choice, encourages uh, a person to uh, have relationships, uh, you know, cultivate friendships and uh, even like even cultivate the friendships, create new friendships that, you know, a couple can enjoy together, I would say. The, the freedom. Number seven, uh, the person has the same sin habits, addictions and struggles and doesn't have freedom. Shouldn't we give a uh, chance for people who are struggling? Or, or do you think that uh, when the person, for example, is addicted to drugs, mm -hmm. um, where is the yeah. line between, you know, dating them uh, or addicted to pornography or addicted to smoking or addicted to lying or maybe other stuff? Where is the line um, of dating them if they are addicted? So I the line is you just don't you you do not date people who are addicted who have really terrible habits that will uh eventually destroy the marriage or a relationship period that person needs a rehab center mm. not a relationship if a person especially addicted is addicted person? to alcohol drugs that's, that's one, that's or one, even one addiction to I'll sex so uh, a person who is addicted needs a rehab not, not a, a relationship, relationship. Yes. oh come on somebody drop that in the chat right now a person but that's because, addicted yeah but because needs a they need a rehab 
they think they will find their rehab in the relationships mm. but it's a very false notion it's absolutely untrue that will actually uh, destroy another person's world mm -hmm. and not heal that person who is addicted to mm -hmm. something now if you are in a marriage relationship and you are addicted you know we are not saying okay d dump your spouse right now yeah. and then uh, dump him into rehab and also a lot of people uh, who are addicted I feel like they need deliverance and discipline not dating yeah that's good on. drop that mm -hmm. in the chat if you're addicted you need deliverance and discipline not dating mm -hmm. so it's important that you take time to get free so for those of you who are right now watching and mm -hmm. you're single please don't feed that addiction um, get freedom overcome that get 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 into deliverance um, come to our prayer line and get delivered you know go through my prayer line prayer videos and get delivered experience deliverance it doesn't mean if you get married you have to be perfect you know we all sin and stumble but when you willfully habitually intentionally continue to sin without repentance it destroys the yeah. other person and if kids are involved it's extremely extremely difficult and damaging marriage is supposed to be a blessing but you will make it a battlefield uh, because of that addiction and it just makes it very very difficult and so mm -hmm. uh, if if you're single and you're dating somebody who is addicted to porn right now and they do not seek deliverance they do not want to put um, any kind of discipline in their own life drop them like a hot potato and run from them like from a plague yep number eight uh, the person doesn't respect purity and has no desire to wait until marriage to have sexual relationship that's huge mm -hmm. If from the beginning this person is not <coughs> willing to set boundaries with you and not willing to help you guard those boundaries but they are opposite they're like no I want to make out no I want to have sex or no I want to have all these other sexual activities that are not you know or, intercourse or, or, or anything some of that. people some guys mm -hmm. they say yes okay yeah I can do that but then they push the envelope they said one thing with their words but with their actions they're pushing the envelope of purity mm -hmm. so that's a huge red yeah they're not interested yes mm -hmm. um, in that and they are just simply wanting to um, they, they're just in there not for love they're in there for lust mm -hmm. um, they don't um, love you they love pleasure they don't love the person and, so, yeah. and that is that is a big red flag if somebody from the beginning says no I want to you know don't buy a cow <laughs> if you don't drink milk from it don't buy a car if you don't test it if that's their view of sexuality mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. then you have to present to them say hey listen um, home slice um, uh, sexuality is more like a super glue than a milk from a cow or a test driving <laughs> a car and you don't play around with super glue you don't test super glue on your finger because I it's gonna stick that's why yeah. people develop soul ties, get demons and sexual transmitted diseases, get unwanted pregnancy and so many other things. And sex has to be reserved for marriage. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm going to go as far as to say this. One of the best ways to know if the person really loves you or they want to use you is deny them sex until the altar. Yes. Yeah. And then you will see. Yeah. If they love you, love is patient. They'll <laughs> be with you. Yep. If they don't, if they're, they're only lusting, they're, they're going to walk away and find somebody find who will give them else, what they yeah. really want, mm -hmm. which is not, Definitely. they don't want uh, love, they just want lust. Uh, red flag number, number nine. nine, you don't want kids to become like him or her. <laughs> that is a red flag. <laughs> if you're looking at this person and you're like, I do, would never want, I'm not saying that the kids will not look like that person. Okay, because a lot Just of times, become like yeah, because yeah. a lot of things, uh, this is what I realize about guys and girls. Before we get married, we focus on our wants. The moment you get married, you focus on your needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, w before, before you get married, you, you know, you want him to be handsome, you know, you want him to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, rich and everything. Smart when you get dog. married, mm -hmm. um, you want him to be there for you, you want yeah. him to take care of you. You want him to notice Be you. You want him to responsible. You want all of those things mm -hmm. when you get married, and so mm -hmm. um, that's very, very different. Now, number ten. Number ten. You don't have peace about marrying this person, and this is big. If you're a believer, I think it's a must. It's one of the uh, God-given signs that uh, you know the Lord, uh, that person fits you well. Is you have to have peace about that. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Number 11. 11. Your mentors and family feel iffy about this person. 
Now, if th this one is more if your um, if your uh, mentors and your parents they are godly people and you know you you trust them in a lot of of their advices and things like that and if they don't feel good and they see something further than you see when you like someone because when you're like in that infatuation stage you're kind of wearing those pink glasses you please you do need an input from people that you can trust and many times if they feel iffy about it most likely they are right and then and another thing you have to keep in mind is the moment things go bad mm -hmm. guess who you're gonna go to those people you're gonna go to help. your parents yeah you're gonna go to your mm -hmm. um your mentors so it's important to um, pay attention to uh, the words that they speak um, mm -hmm. it is your decision but it's important <coughs> to pay attention to the words that they speak mm -hmm. and number 12, number 12. Uh, being with that person has distracted you from Christ the church and your closest friends and this is huge I've seen this happen every single time left and right where someone gets into the relationships and they are no longer in church they're no longer th they're pulled out like a magnet out of the church out of the fellowship with friends they're secluded they're nowhere to be found until they come back broken mm -hmm. unfortunately that is that is so true and that's one and of the signs it's, yeah. it's like that obsessive love it's that infatuation mm -hmm. and some people are afraid they're like oh i when i when i fall in love or when i start dating this person you know I, I feel like it's a distraction to my walk with god like to some degree you, you will be a, like there, there is going to be this thing where this person is going to be on your mind. As long as you are still with your church, with your family, and as long as you're still with your closest friends. Yeah. But to some degree, there will be this season where there will be a little bit of distraction. Yeah, so of I, I think it's, it's, it's normal. Don't feel bad about it. They did not become an idol and <laughs> they are not an Isaac that you need to sacrifice. Okay. So like, because I know, uh, and this is when you know you're not mature. Uh, and I always tell people, when you are from 13 to 19 and you still have the teen attached to your age, um, a relationship will always distract you. It's very difficult because you're still not emotionally super mature. And, but then when you hit about 21, 22, your, your level is different. You're thinking not just with your heart, you're thinking with your head, you're thinking with your, con your conscience, you're kind of reevaluating everything. And these relationships, even if they kind of will infuse you with a lot of emotion and love and mm -hmm. thoughts, and, but you'll know that, hey, this is, not, this is a good thing. This is a, th this is not distracting me from God, from the church, and everything. But when when you're a teenager, like it's <laughs> literally like nothing exists. This the, only this person you're thinking living only for them 100. percent And so that's why I always tell people that do not get married if you do not date if you're not ready for marriage, yeah. and and don't think about marriage if you have a teen attached, attached to your teen. age. <laughs> and the last number thirteen, you are you're already praying for God to change that person. <laughs> It's funny, but Lord, I love him. But please, can you change him in this save area him, or Lord. her? Save him, Lord. Yeah, save him, save Lord. Him. Don't make him look at other girls. Lord, please help him to stop being lazy and playing video <laughs> games 24/7. Lord, help him to be more responsible. And and then you're looking for a job for him because he doesn't want to work. You know, like and it's just like it's better to not to bring. I always so in final thoughts, I'm gonna share mm -hmm. three things concerning this. Um, it's better to wait for God to bring the right person to you than to wait for God to change the wrong person mm -hmm. that you bring to God. And when I say wrong person, it's when you ignore all the red flags and you still do it because, um, you know, you really are infatuated. It's not that, oh, they are in the Lord and you wish to be with this person as much as you're just ignoring the common mm -hmm. sense. You're going against the wisdom of the wise people in your life and you're going against your own peace uh, there's tension right there like in there but you're crossing all of that because you're infatuated and because you just don't want to miss out nobody's going to love you you will never get another chance this person is hot well hell is hot you don't want to <laughs> date hell you know oh but this person is like so amazing and and everything and you know that they, they are everything that your ex wasn't you know everything that your ex couldn't be and so like now the fact that they're missing the other 80 percent that maybe your previous relationship had you're looking blindly at that stuff closing your eyes hoping that they will change and then you start kind of like going into the relationship knowing that they need drastic like construction remodel in their life, spiritually remodel in their life. But you're jumping in and you're hoping that I'm going to pray them out, I'm going to fast them out. Listen, now if you're in that situation already, keep going. Do not give up. But if you're not in that situation, 
Why please would don't you? do it. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want to destroy your life like that? Why? When you can spend your life being with a person that can help you to move mountains, establish God's kingdom, where well, you don't have to fight about tongues or cessationism or, or fight about going to church or not going to church. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, why would you want to do that yeah. and stuff? It's better to be single and whole than to be married and be in some kind of yeah, an emotional mm -hmm. prison. And so I just really want to encourage you guys, marriage is not that easy um, and, it's, and it's so difficult when you're married with a person who does not share your values, who doesn't have respect for you yeah. and who is chronically narcissistic or controlling, manipulative. Imagine walking with two types of shoes. One shoe has one size, the other shoe has the other size. Like you won't walk mm -hmm. for very long. Mm -hmm. Imagine running like that. It's uncomfortable. Now, can you still do it? Yeah. So people sometimes look, oh, but it's not wrong. The Bible doesn't say it's wrong. No, it's not wrong. But the question I want to ask you, is, is it, it wise? wise? Is it wise? Is this the best thing for your future in light of your past, in light of the calling, in light of the advice that you received from your mom and dad, in, in the light of the peace that you don't feel in your heart? Your God says, run. Your God says, you're making a big mistake in light of all of that. Is this the wisest decision? So yes, the Bible tells us they have to be in the Lord. The Bible tells us you can marry at liberty whom you wish, but the Bible is also a book of wisdom. Yeah. And the Bible gives yeah. us people yeah. like Vlad and Lana, like your mom and your dad, gives us other people who walk alongside of us and say, hey, mm -hmm. you don't, don't camp at it's not wrong. Move to the side that it's wise. Now, the other um, two final thoughts that we want to give him is don't be blind to what you're seeing during dating as we mentioned. Spoon food in dating is tons in marriage, meaning ah, it's just a little problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in marriage, it's going to be a big. big problem. Whatever is in dating usually gets magnified in marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if this person is not clean, they are not going to get clean because they're going to get your last name. If this person is not punctual, I can tell you one thing, marriage vows does not, has never changed anybody to be punctual. And so like just, just remember, you know, don't be blind to what you're seeing right now and don't hide it under a carpet because it's not going anywhere after the wedding. And the third thing is that, you know, I mentioned before you get married, we seem to focus on what we want. When we get married, we begin to more focus on what we need. We need yeah. Now, the final question and we're going to go through some questions that you guys have. So mm -hmm. guys, um, um, we're going to now answer how we knew that we were the right people and um, and then how we knew that the people that we were with before were not the right people. But before we do that, make sure that you hit thumbs up to the video. Help us with the algorithm. There's 590 of you but only 570 likes on YouTube. Let me refresh the page. Uh, 572 likes. So everybody go and hit like thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up on YouTube if it costs you absolutely nothing. All you just got to do is hit thumbs up and then share it on Facebook as well. Now um, if you are re-watching this make sure you hit thumbs up as well and, and share this with somebody and if you are uh, listening to this we welcome you as well. Now how did you know I was the one for you? <laughs> yes um, I think um, number one thing that I had this inner assurance that you were for me really you know many uh, girls kind of ask me how did you how did you know and I usually like to say if you're walking with the Lord you will know you can't really necessarily pinpoint of this is how I knew but I knew like they say you have peace in your heart even though I had fears mm. I had a lot of fears about him and about a lot of different things and um, fears why would you fears, have fears yeah about me? Uh, some of the Such fears a... were instilled in me by my parents you know and but deep down inside when and, you like when fears? I dug through my fears mm -hmm. I knew that I knew that you were the one for me mm -hmm. even when you broke up with me oh yeah, so yes yes guys I broke this up. is the, the the very it was very hard when you when he kind of broke up with me after our first date when I, I already problem. knew he he was the one for me I was so devastated I didn't know how to like understand that feeling inside mm -hmm. but eventually everything worked out <laughs> anyways so that that was that was 
That's what I usually like to say. Um, this inner assurance. I- inner assurance and uh, even despite of the fears. Mm-hmm. And then you were in the Lord and you had qualities that I dreamed of and prayed for mm-hmm. to have in my husband. Mm-hmm. So, and one of those qualities were um, that you love the Lord. You love the Lord so much. You were committed to God. That mm-hmm. was number one thing. And the fact that you love the church. Because even before I met you, for me personally, what's important was uh, I promised God that I will be in the church, in the house of God, specifically in the church, and I will build the church. Before I met Vlad, mm-hmm. I made that promise to the Lord when I got saved uh, because I really love the church. I love mm-hmm. the uh, the assembly of God and the people. Mm-hmm. So the uh, I see people are asking, what happened? Why did you break up? <laughs> what was your mental <laughs> of problem? Of course, you yeah. all will be asking that. <laughs> yeah. Let's leave that for a time when we're going to do coffee Next with Vlad year. and Lana. Sure. Yeah, so <laughs> we, w- we will leave some of those questions for some other day. Uh, but <laughs> a, in a nutshell, um, I had a problem with my mind. I had strongholds <laughs> and um, I uh, dated one person twice and I broke up with them before I met Lana, like from age I think 20 to 22. And um, so I knew after that that I had some problems. Um, I had a problem with decisiveness and it's one of my strongest um, characteristics exactly. as I, right yeah. now yeah. is I'm very, very decisive, mm-hmm. but I was not like that before. I was constantly going back and forth, back and forth in my mind. And um, and then I met Lana. I right away uh, that night I broke up with her um, and stuff. So because I was like... Not uh, when you met me, when uh, we started like our first date. Yeah, after the first date, I, I broke up. Yeah, partially it was because of, uh, for those of you who know our testimony, I, I um, Lana's testimony uh, is very powerful, <laughs> which we're releasing in a few weeks on Hungry Gen YouTube. And um, and you will hear it. You know, she comes from a from a pastor's family. She's pastor's daughter, but that she d- means <laughs> yeah. And she did not walk with the Lord all her life. And so no, I uh, I had certain expectations, and I felt like oh, these expectations are not going to be met if I marry her. And so and that's again to the first point when I mentioned about expectation and preparation. Mm-hmm. And so and then we went on a 21 day fast. I felt like the Lord dealt with me, um, with my heart as well, and with my mind. And things just kind of shifted. And so how did I know that you were the one? is that I I had assurance I mm-hmm. most importantly had peace and I had no fear about your past my biggest fear was before the fast was that um, if we get married that your past will bother me all the time and I will be bringing that up regularly and we will fight about it that was my biggest fear so it wasn't necessarily and that's fair Th- yeah, that's fair enough yes yeah, yeah. so it wasn't necessarily that I did not want to <clears throat> um, that I did not want to date the person it's just I did not want to be uh, somebody that will be with somebody that I have to constantly fight my in my mind to keep my mind pure in the sense of not bringing their past into the present mm-hmm. and I knew that you know I'm a a person who did not have that past, it would be difficult for me. And so knowing myself and so, but the Lord really dealt with my heart and I almost felt like He said, hey, um, you know, that is gone, that's covered by the blood. And you know, and that's a cliche that I could use, but something mm-hmm. happened to me. Yeah. I had this piece about uh, about Lana and I, I liked Lana from the beginning. I liked the way she looked physically. She was very attractive. Um, so I had definitely feelings and, uh, but now I had this piece and I had absolutely no fear. The Bible says perfect good. love casts Come out on. fear. So good. And so yes. um, and I feel like that love casts out that mm-hmm. fear mm-hmm. that I was um, willing and not just willing but mm-hmm. I really f- felt like I will embrace her and I feel like after that I've developed mm-hmm. a greater grace toward people mm-hmm. who are mm-hmm. coming back to Christ from a very terrible past. Yeah and I just want to add something. Uh, I have a past right and my biggest fear was that I will never be good enough Mm. for a good guy that I want Mm. and I had to overcome that fear but what made it all kind of like intense for me when he broke up with me all my fears came to the surface and the devil start whispering to me see I told you because you have a dirty past you can never be with a good guy and I had to battle and fight in my mind that I am worthy 
because Jesus Christ cleansed me and mm -hmm. I am pure now. I am a new creation. My past is over. Jesus doesn't see me like that. And, and I had to battle and battle. It was very difficult. But as soon as I overcame and I stood on the word of God and I said, no, the Lord loves me. I am clean. I, I am worthy of a good man. Mm -hmm. And after that, the funny thing is he went into fasting during that time. I was battling this issue. I overcame in my mind. I still I'm like, you know what? No, God loves me. I'm going to marry a good man, even if it's not going to be Vlad. And I just kind of moved on. And less than a month uh, passed by and Vlad reached out back to me and he overcame his fears i overcame my fears and i feel like god kind of like set it up that way that we enter a relationship in no with no fears mm -hmm. with resolved fears and with a clean slate so That's just good. oh man this is so good i mm -hmm. think this is leading to the end where you just you just touched on something that um in a nutshell and guys we're, we're being vulnerable as well um uh i stayed as a as a virgin physically um until you know the age of until uh, the time of our wedding night um but i i did have pornography issue when i was younger before i met my wife and um so to some degree while i prided myself that i was a virgin and that's one of the things the lord used during that time is he said you're no let you is it m emotionally you're not a virgin mm -hmm. mentally you are not a virgin um you're only a virgin physically and so um and you know to some degree this pride had to fall in me i'm not in any way saying that if you have expectations if you're a virgin to only marry a virgin that is a bad expectation but what i do know for for what happened to us is there was a sense of humility grace that has happened and i love the fact that our marriage can simplify and give hope to people that are watching right now who feel like maybe you're not good enough yeah. who feel like i uh, i screwed up i made mistakes I uh, lost my virginity. Maybe or I don't deserve. Or I, d I don't person. deserve a great marriage. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve uh, to be with a great person. Or maybe you are that person who you feel like you are a great person. Um, you're only great by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Only God's grace kept you. Um, it wasn't your own doing. And if you if you adopt if you embrace that, then you'll be able to come alongside the other person that you maybe love that is maybe the right person for you, but today you're holding back because you're like, well, they're not good enough for me. Um, that, that is not the grace, that is not the power. And so, um, and that's what happened with us. And, mm -hmm. you know, ever since then, the Lord yeah. has really been working in the marriage. We've never had mm -hmm. that. Um, I would say in the last 12 years of our marriage, not one time in an argument where I brought Lana's past um, in that. Now, there were times we talked about it just like casually, or laughed about it but um or even and she never brought my problem you know that i had an issue with pornography she never brought that up and you know said oh but look at you or anything of that and even when there were times that where i would feel a strong temptation or an attack coming upon me and i would come to my wife and you know say hey i i'm feeling attacked i feel like this this thing is attacking me like whether it was lust or whether it was sugar craving or some other stuff and i'm like hey i'm struggling in this area you know and she would come alongside with grace um she received grace i received grace and we both grow in grace and so um jesus christ is the best the cross yeah. is what is the foundation of our relationship and she's a great example that god can redeem anybody i'm a great example as well that god can deliver you perpetually and permanently set you free and you can be free indeed can somebody say man we just broke 800 on youtube and i see it's keep cutting off Praise the sound god. guys hang in there don't give up on us <laughs> we are coming back <laughs> so yeah. um would you like there to add go. anything concerning that because um, that was such a beautiful um yeah. ending to what you just shared no i ju i i just want to add that i am so glad that god led us through this path i mean obviously not ideal mm -hmm. but uh, coming through that just kind of taught us to be more gracious and extend um, you know that mercy and graciousness towards people knowing that we are not perfect even if we think we are uh, perfect in certain areas we still all need the it's only by the grace of God Amen. and we cannot be so stuck up and thinking we're all this and that mm. if we are 
uh, virgin or whatnot, it's it's good. It's very good. It's very praiseworthy. It's important, but it does not give us the right to look down upon people or think that we are better than other people. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, did you receive something today? If you received something today, if this was a blessing to you, would you let me know that in the chat? Mm -hmm. Some people saying oh, it's powerful, it had me in tears. Um, Lana, please share how your husband is saying tempted to watch porn. How did you deal with <laughs> so that's, <laughs> actually, not, that's not um, what I said. I actually, <laughs> but, uh, I actually wanted to still uh, ask you a question. Um, how did you know that the person you were dating before me, uh, what were the signs that they were not the one? I think that um, it was definitely had nothing to do with um, not being in the Lord and um, a lot of things I think that for me personally it was some cultural things that it didn't fit for other people it would it would fit um, and um, I feel like when I was trying to change that person that person was trying to change me there was a lot of changing of mm -hmm. each other instead mm -hmm. of accepting mm -hmm. of each other that's and good. to me yeah. that that was the biggest sign that um, that's why I always say to people that do not marry somebody you're trying to change already yeah, yeah. And so because mm -hmm. to me that was kind of like big. the uh, the thing um, and it almost felt like if we were if we were to get married um, you know it will change when we get married and another part is that financially we just it just it was already in that place where financially I wasn't able to uh, mm -hmm. to be uh, living as a married man and so uh, like there was a lot of these kind of small red sign r red flags that mm -hmm. were there my parents were kind of like hesitant about it as well but they had their own preferences and so parents will always have their own kind of like preferences which is we, we should always heed to them um, we don't always um, maybe accept them because we have to make our own decisions but it's important to listen to your parents yeah. um, and so but mainly the one of changing a person instead of accepting the person who they are and I think you have to find the person that you you're accepting them for who they are yeah, instead yeah, of trying yeah. to change yeah, them that's, that's what about strange. you because you were uh, with the person before uh, you met me and um, uh, yes yes in fact was actually that? I was <laughs> I was dating a guy right before I met Vlad uh, and he was a great guy very actually very good guy but if there, he's there watching was if you're <laughs> watching you are forgiven just want to <laughs> let you know you, I forgive there you, was just two things that you. I it was just a red flag and I knew it I should have not even dated that guy because I was in a different spiritual state in my life I was after God I was pursuing the Lord and but I was already of age and especially in the Russian community there's a kind of like a little pressure okay what are you thinking you need to get married and then there is this uh, you know good guy that is kind of liking me pursuing me so I started dating him and number one thing that kind of was a huge red flag is that he was Christian but he was not dedicated Christian and he had uh, the, his close friends were not Christian at all they were drinking they were like and to me I knew that is a huge red flag just like we mm. talked about it and I told him once I'm like hey I'm not okay with those friends how about that and that and and obviously if a person's heart heart is not changed towards the Lord mm -hmm. how can the person change the influence and friends that he, and I knew right away I cannot be changing this person into someone he's not and I'm not gonna be dragging this person to church man has to lead a woman to church not the other way around a woman dragging her man to church and I was just not gonna be doing that and I remember <laughs> that night you reached out to me and start talking to me on Skype I was still dating that guy and I knew I'm like I can't do this like I wanted to talk to you and I was like oh my gosh this guy preacher <laughs> talking to me and I'm like ah oh, what's going on so I actually um, I broke up with that person the same night and I told him hey I can't do this anymore I am really sorry it's just not gonna work out we are not on the same path and I I started talking to this guy <laughs> not so, the best so, way so but it was truthful so technically <laughs> you started to talk to me right after well it was kind of like overlapping but by a few days <laughs> I was saying. Wow. Okay. yeah um, Anyways, if you're watching if you're that guy yeah. and you're watching I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. but I think it had to happen and this was um, 
This was right. Amen. So guys, um, we're going to go through the questions right now. If you are on TikTok or Instagram, head over to YouTube to drop the question. We will try to go through as many questions. But before we do that, if this was a blessing to you guys, I want to ask you to mm. sow into um, the ministry today. You can either do it by one time donating or um, you can become a partner. If you're on YouTube, I want to invite you. There's 653 of you. I want to invite you to become a member of our channel. You can do There's three layers and uh, you can get some certain emojis and, and everything. So that's one of the ways you can uh, sponsor uh, and support our ministry. You can become a member. You can become a partner of our ministry. Something as, as low as $10 a month can help us to write, read, write more books, translate more books, release more e-courses. We don't just spend this money to build a studio. The studio is already done. We're spending all of this money so we can help to support the staff that we have that works on this content yeah. and then translates the content, uh, releases the content. As you know, one thing that our ministry offers everything for free. And so we, we're able to do that because of people like you guys. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> so you can become a partner or you can give one time. You can give on Cash App, on Venmo, you can give on PayPal. You can also give through the YouTube chat, just in, straight in the YouTube chat or on Facebook you can give through stars. Um, and so all the links are dropped right now. I'm going to simultaneously just read through some donations and as well as we're going to read through some questions. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that's giving yes. and everybody that's supporting. And if you cannot give, no problem. We do appreciate you and uh, we are here to serve you. We're really glad that you are <coughs> with us today. Now, let's go through the, some questions. Sure. Do you think people should marry with people the same gift? Who have the same gift. Oh, who have the same gift. <laughs> evangelist. I'm assuming like calling. Uh -huh. <coughs> excuse me. Evangelist with evangelist. Um, I don't think no, so. No, I don't think so. You know, yeah. A, a lot of people don't. Um, you're marrying somebody to be with. You're not. Um, necessarily trying to marry I think to it, be in the I, same stage. Yeah, I think it has to complement your callings. For example, Vlad is called to be an apostle and a pastor, and he is. And I am just his big fan, and I am called to be in the ministry too, maybe nothing super specific. I am so satisfied and happy where I'm at, supporting my husband and pastoring a church with him. I'm, yeah, we just complement each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rowena, thank you for your donation on Cash App. Um, thank you for um, Shakuya. I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Thank you for your donation. Joseph, also thank you for your um, donation on Cash App. What about kissing before marriage or how far is too far? I think you answered that. <laughs> I think that I would highly discourage yeah. um, kissing before marriage. Uh, for this reason is because it does lead to other things very quickly. It accelerates. Um, is it true that in the Bible it does not tell us that you know it's it's a sin? No, it doesn't tell us, but it does lead to other things. And so I believe that it's not a wise thing to do, and um, and I would highly discourage. May your first kiss be at the altar. Um, this is what I tell people: invest as much into relationship as you're willing to lose without feeling embarrassed by looking at that person yeah. afterwards. If something you know, doesn't work yeah. out. Mm -hmm. When one of the things that I did um, when I was in a relationship that I mentioned about, and that was a long time ago, um, I actually performed a wedding for this person 10 years, I think, or something later. And one of the reasons why is because when you don't cross the physical lines, when you don't cross the, the lines of, of uh, physical context or sexual immorality, you will be able to then actually have um, a decent Christian friendly relationship with that person without feeling awkward or switching churches. And you don't have to worry about soul ties. Yeah. And so that's kind of um, uh, my encouragement. Mm -hmm. Can we hear about the breakup? We uh, already shared that. We already shared that. Um, uh -huh. Lana, please share how you deal with your husband husband saying he's tempted to watch porn? That's a good question. Um, I think number one thing, ladies, please don't freak out. It's huge not to, not to freak out. And I remember how God actually dealt with me. Uh, 
in w- with this with this issue because I remember Vlad kind of confessed not that he was watching porn while we were married but how he was tempted or he looked at something he should have not looked at the woman or something along those lines I remember I freaked out like crazy I went almost into like this hysteria mode and I I think I felt worse because the way I reacted than from he what what he actually did Hmm. and that day uh the lord taught me and i told myself no matter what i will never react the same way again i don't want to be that person you just have to be so secure with god that your happiness your state of peace does not depend on your husband i think this is huge just um talk about it uh give him grace and pray for your husband and everything's going to be fine if he's a good man and he wants to change it's going to be fine yeah and i think that it's it's very important not to jump right away to Mm -hmm. um if it takes a lot of courage to confess exactly and i do encourage a man um that if you have committed those things that you have to even if you're struggling I think it's important to confess to another man. That's probably the best. Um, but at the same time, um, in my case, when I do struggle, I trust my wife. She's my co-laborer and she is my partner in crime. <laughs> well, not in crime. She is my partner in, um, in, in sanctification and in <laughs> holiness. And so she helps me to walk in righteousness. And when she has an attack you know, at night or some kind of a negative thought, and I pray for her. And when I get attacked, and especially in this area, mm-hmm. this has nothing to do with her. It's hard to kind of disconnect that it's not because you're not beautiful. It's not because of that. It just it just has to do with, uh, you know, I'm a human being and I can come under attack and I have a safe place yeah. and I trust her yeah. to handle that by praying for me. I have also other people, but I, but because it affects her as well, I, I do. I don't believe that every time you had a thought, you have to come to your wife and confess it because otherwise she's yeah, going to kill yeah. you after a while. But I think it together. goes uh, the same way towards the husband. If I am emotionally uh, not stable or something, he doesn't like bash me mm-hmm. for freaking out or sharing my emotions that might overwhelm him a little mm-hmm. bit. He actually helps me. He's like, everything's going to be fine. He doesn't take it personally. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, before we read the next question, Lupe, thank you so much for your uh, gift on YouTube. And it's a channel. Welcome to the Spiritual Soldier member, as well as Tommy. Thank you so much for um, uh, your donation on YouTube. And we appreciate uh, Julie for your donation, as well as uh, Euphemia. Thank you for your donation. And Jasmine, Jessica, and Joseph, thank you uh, for your donation. Next question. Although the grace of God says you. Uh, you and he forgives you of your sin so he forgives you of your he sin forgives you does the consequences of your past sin last forever through generations like david can you uh-huh. uh, can i uh, yeah. think uh um can i think <laughs> like marriage even after i have trauma like daddy issues so it is true that your past is forgiven but the consequences of your past they are going to be still there and uh people who think that just because you were forgiven and just because you were now accepted that you never have to renew your mind or deal with some wrong images scars or or even some trauma that you receive in the world by living a life of sin or deliverance definitely i do believe that sometimes deliverance renewing of the mind and counseling will be required for some people um we did have to address few things um in our past and i do think that we don't know to which extent some of the things we fight with battle with are rooted in the things that we've done before we gave our life to christ that we have to kind of walk now in righteousness in holiness and so that's why i would really encourage to purity and holiness is the way to go and if you do get married the grace of god will cover but there are some consequences you have to you will have to face um, you will have to face like if you have children yeah. from your past they don't disappear just because <coughs> you got saved and they were born out of wedlock yeah. you know they, yeah. they don't evaporate so there yeah, will be and things. healing is a process especially yeah. from trauma yeah. yeah where are these men that are committed to the lord they are in the church <laughs> those that love the lord and those that love the church of jesus come on that's um, where I found mine. <laughs> come on, <laughs> And somebody. they are on your knees praying. 
So they are, they exist. These men exist. These women exist. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to be patient. And if you're like Adam, you're looking and you can't find, you need to go to sleep. And then Jesus is going to cook something up mm -hmm. and bring it to you at your right time. So make sure you don't uh, forget that. Um, George, thank you for your donation. And Stacy, thank you for your donation on the website. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate that. Let's go to the next question. Mm -hmm. Uh, so do you have to go to church to meet men that love love God more? Um, personally, my opinion, yes. I would have not gone anywhere else to find, uh, to look for a man that loves God. If a man loves God, but he sits at home and does not attend the church, it's a huge red flag for me. She Good said question. it. Yes, she said it I, in the Bible. A lot of men of God met their wives at the well. Moses at the well, mm -hmm. Jacob mm -hmm. at the well, even Jesus met a woman at the mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So this is my advice. Find your well <laughs> and you'll find your man. Ooh. Find your well. <laughs> you'll find your woman. Yeah. Now, if you cannot uh, make sure the well is not dry. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you can't find a man in the particular church and you meet him some come to other race to church deliver. that's okay <laughs> come to race to deliver yeah come on no actually yeah you you can go to other churches as well you can go you to know, a conference you can go to a conference yeah there's anywhere, nothing wrong with yeah. that yeah you as can long come to as the man is in the church i have a solution hungry gen internship <laughs> <laughs> just not mormon church <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hungry Janet. Actually, it's, it's surprising how many people uh, <laughs> in our internship, our fall internship, have gotten married. It's incredible. Yeah, it's and true, there's nothing actually, wrong with that. Yeah, people no, come no, to, yeah, to yeah. seek Jesus. And that's how the Bible says, uh, bless, <clears throat> um, you know, he who finds a wife. The word finds, it means like you're running your race or like you're doing something and you notice it's on the side. And so it's the same thing as you're you're pursuing the purpose of God. You're not chasing it and then you just yeah. kind of find it's it's over there. So yeah. So come to Race to Deliver. Come to our internship and um, come to like, because it also if you're a demon slayer, you believe in casting out demons and, and you're going to go to a like a reformed conference and God God bless them reforms Calvinist or you're gonna go to a Baptist conference you're gonna go to a conference where people like literally they think it's a freak show and deliverance is not for today healing is not for today gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for today mm -hmm. then honestly like okay Jacko is making some noise over here he needs to go party. he needs to go uh, if somebody upstairs can open the door for him um, so if um, you do that then you're definitely going to be finding a person that you either have to compromise your beliefs or you're gonna have to mm -hmm fight a lot about those beliefs. So I would encourage you to go to places that are similar to what you are and go to their internships, go to their conferences and mingle with yeah, other believers. Yeah, there's nothing yeah, wrong with about yeah, that. Yeah. There's nothing there's mm -hmm. nothing unholy about that. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Let's go to the next question. Okay, um, so let's first um, thank you um, Perry for your very generous donation on uh, Venmo. And then thank you as well uh, Bernice for your very generous uh, donation mm -hmm. on YouTube chat. So how do you balance waiting for the Lord to bring you your spouse versus online Christian dating sites? Uh, if you are, I mean, if you are a lady, um, I'm not sure. I think you should probably um, focus. What so do you think? You, so it's both. It's, it's, yeah. it's both. It's, it's waiting. So it also depends on your situation. Depends it's, on it's, yeah. depends on a lot of stuff here. Mm -hmm. One is that your time and your season. There's some waiting where you have to wait like Adam. You have to go to sleep. Close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Stop searching. Mm -hmm. Stop looking because you're recovering from a past. You're not ready for for marriage. And so, but if you are ready for marriage and you are in that age, um, then I'm not against online dating. Um, a lot of people meet each other. I yeah. think there's a lot of deception that's mm -hmm. there. And so um, I met my wife actually through Facebook. My first interaction with Lana was on Facebook. Yeah. It was not yeah. in person. Yeah. Then I met her in, face, uh, on, in person. And so, um, but I would just really encourage that as a Christian that you don't become desperate to, be, to become married. Um, you should be desperate to be holy, desperate yeah. to yeah. be in love with yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And um, that's what you should use their desperation for. Marriage is not your identity. Yeah. Your identity yeah. is Christ you are in Jesus Christ and so you can wait on God 
and but you also have the Bible says faith without works is dead mm -hmm. so faith in God without any kind of works mm -hmm. um, whether it's you know going to conference putting yeah, yourself yeah. out there meaning like if there's some kind of a gathering you go there and when you go there yeah. please don't come mm -hmm. like Mordecai you know ripped ripped uh, garments yes. and then uh, yeah. ashes on your head meaning like you absolutely you're yeah. not cleaned up you're not washed up you don't have yeah. any um, you didn't prepare yourself yeah. you know the Bible says even uh, Naomi told Ruth she, she says when you're yeah. gonna go to mm -hmm. Boaz <laughs> girl get yourself ready and it was yeah. night the guy didn't even yeah. couldn't even see her she still put some makeup on you know clean up her hair mm -hmm. and you know looked all pretty and stuff put some uh, yeah and I think it's, smelly uh, stuff uh, if it's a lady uh, two things are very important number one is prayer you have to present Good. your desires to the Lord he hears you you are his daughter he knows and he's gonna bring you that man okay who will mm -hmm. pursue you but bring that in prayer to God and number two please make yourself look pretty and presentable at all times you are in social gatherings i like what it's one person said uh, he's supposed <laughs> to find a wife but it's okay to make you make yourself in the position to be found exactly that's I a like good that. one I that's like a that good answer. one yeah because guys are super visual you know you you don't need to oh he needs to love me for how i am and who i am and the, i woke up like this i brushed my hair and that's enough i want him to love me like like i am no ladies please uh, you have to be presentable put some makeup on look fresh you know feel fresh smell fresh guys are attracted to things like that even the men of god <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah yeah boys usually fall in love with uh, with their eyes women with their ears if my boyfriend is against deliverance and doesn't want me to believe it <laughs> then your boyfriend has a demon <laughs> maybe yeah, that's maybe that's a very uh, jabby but honestly if somebody's against deliverance mm -hmm. and um, it's in the Bible and so if you are against deliverance or if, if you're with a girlfriend mm -hmm. that's against deliverance I wonder what else they're against and my other question would be I wonder what else they are for are they domesticating some demons in their own life why they're yeah, against deliverance yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and so I would just be kind of I would not ignore that when somebody is against deliverance I'm not saying that you know people who are against deliverance should be with people who are against deliverance and so but Jesus was delivering people and I think that mm -hmm. that's something that we should be on with mm -hmm. the person who is mm -hmm. for casting demons out healing the sick and preaching the gospel because yeah. I mean I wonder if he's gonna stop with it's after such that. a basic uh, yeah uh, fundamental this is not even like belief. speaking in tongues yeah. you know I wouldn't even be with somebody if they don't want to be uh, yeah. or against yeah. speaking in yeah. tongues like it's one thing if they don't speak in tongues mm -hmm. it's another thing if they're against speaking in tongues okay so it's it's one thing if they don't cast out demons okay yeah. we can live with that yeah. but if you're against casting out demons yeah. and, if, and you don't want to believe in casting problem. out demons yeah. uh, come on bro like it's in the Bible now which one is next? Is it okay to marry to my husband who doesn't believe in Jesus? Is it okay to be married to my husband? If he if he is already so, your husband, yeah, and he is not a believer, so you're probably married already. You have to stay with him. Yeah, that's according to the Bible. Unless he walks away, yes, as the Bible says. Unless he walks away, but you don't leave him, and with your godly behavior and prayers, mm -hmm. you will win him to the Lord. Yeah. No. But if you're not married and if it's your boyfriend and he's unbeliever and you're a believer, uh, you are unequally yoked. And according to the Bible, he's not in the Lord and you should not marry that person. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure those of you who are watching, hit thumbs up to the video if you're enjoying this content. If you're rewatching, make sure you do the same. Let's go to the next question. God will make me marry someone I don't like, right? I got rejected by a girl from a church I go to and I think that I'm in a situation where another girl I don't like at all is trying to hit on me. <laughs> oh, I love the transparency. Yeah. So, um, I think that you should not pursue a relationship with somebody who you do not find physical attraction for. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can't be friends and you cannot provide opportunity to see if the attraction might come. I know people who have uh, had friendships and then this attraction came but at first they started with like having mm -hmm. no attraction. Before I met Lana there was a person that I that I liked okay and then um, 
we were just talking i knew of her she believed her and all this stuff and um and then when i kind of told her over a text message was probably not a good idea um that i i liked her and i wanted to pursue the relationship you know she gave me this cold uh actually no response from like seven in the morning until 7 p.m and then 7 p.m i got an email and you know when you get an email that's not good <laughs> <laughs> and the email started with um i just want to start with you're a great preacher and pastor this is Vlad. pastor Vlad. and this is you, you know this is you this is not going to be good and so she just said i just don't see you like that and you're more like a man of god and a preacher you just i just you know would never be able to look at you that way and anyway it was embarrassing and um i got pretty much uh rejected and so she just didn't have feelings uh for me in that sense then we actually continued to build a friendship and and she kept feeding me with this thing that um you know if if we keep on pursuing this relationship i might have a feeling in the future but i just don't have one right now and um and i i, I don't know to me it was not i didn't want to play that game so i let it go and then when i met lana um you know I, I felt that mutual attraction she felt that for me praise God and then I felt that for her and then uh, we build that uh, relationship mm -hmm. but definitely attraction is not the most important thing but um, one the, of our the faith most but but it's also a very important thing so if mm -hmm. you had a girl who didn't like you um, you know let it go uh, because uh, you know marriage is not a uh, prison and and if you have somebody who's hitting on you and you don't like honestly i would say give this person a chance maybe but don't necessarily jump head over heels just because don't make any promises that the girl please. will feel like oh you know yeah you liked her now you don't so yeah. but if you're not attracted to the person uh our advice is don't pursue anything mm -hmm. so pastor vlad and lana what if we have things on on the list you shared we need to work on i'm assuming mm. you're married I'm assuming they are married. Yeah. So if you are married and you have those things you need to work on, <coughs> I would encourage you to really go in as a uh, disciple of Jesus, begin to work on your relationship with Christ, who will in return work on your character. Begin to do what Jesus commands you to do in marriage. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit and honor your husband yeah your husbands mm -hmm. and then you will begin to see that God will begin to work thing one after another if you're addicted you definitely need deliverance you definitely need breakthrough in that area so that's just that's a little bit more step mm -hmm. anything you would advise for couples who are maybe going through they have those red flags and they are married mm -hmm. I mean no just just work on it and yeah maybe get counseling or something another question what do you think about the age is there an age when a person should be um, the dating. age difference or yeah, um, so the age difference what about the age difference and then uh -huh. what about the age so first is the <coughs> age mm -hmm. um, I think that you're not you're ready for marriage you're ready for dating when you're ready for, mm -hmm. for marriage that's my stance on, on this when it comes to age difference mm -hmm. I mean Abraham and Sarah were 10 years apart so I know some people they're like 6, 7 uh, we are um, I'm older one year. I'm one year months. older. Oh, ten months. Okay, mm -hmm. then Vlad and tomorrow is his birthday. <laughs> and I told we're, him we're not, not to talk about it. We're not supposed <laughs> to talk about it. Yeah, it's not about me. It's about but we. It's anyways, about you. Uh -huh. uh, tomorrow we're actually going to be the same age. Mm -hmm. Yay, finally. <laughs> but anyways, it's not a big deal at all. I mm -hmm. think if, uh, if a gal is o older than her husband by a couple of years, that is totally okay mm -hmm. um if it's more than like i don't know if it goes like 10 years and uh, that's a lot i wouldn't recommend and um yeah i feel like yeah. ten, 10 years for me is like it's it's a deal breaker already yeah, yeah. i wouldn't go past 10 years i think like even father abraham didn't go mm -hmm. past 10 years so that but, would be but it's different when a guy is older than oh, a girl okay. by 10 years but when a girl is older than a guy then there could be some issues there but mm -hmm. sometimes it works. I know couples that are like that and it supposedly works. <laughs> okay, so we are going to answer the last question. Okay. The reason being is because we are going to um, <coughs> do more of these. I think that if you guys enjoyed it, if you enjoyed it, let me know in the chat. And yeah. um, we might do coffee with Vlad and Lana. 
very soon mm-hmm. um so uh we like these we like spending time with you guys and so um uh, last one my family wants to marry my same ethnicity what do you think on that okay um i think it's very beneficial and it's mm-hmm. going to be a lot easier for you to marry uh your own culture there is going to be a lot of unnecessary tensions and things to work out or work through if it's two different nationalities and even vlad and i he's ukrainian i'm russian we have su- certain differences uh but if it's completely different cultures it's even more differences to work through so your uh parents they do have a point in advising you but it's still your choice because it can work mm-hmm. it can work but it's going to be a lot harder mm-hmm. even if you don't think right now that it's going to be hard you guys are all the same it doesn't matter it does and when you get married and you establish your family and then you pretty much bring families you marry into family not just mm-hmm. your husband or your wife into the family you will see those differences you will mm-hmm. bump head you will misunderstand you will have to kind of like mm-hmm. no you know, what we're not saying is that if you marry a different culture it will not work yes we are we are actually that. are different cultures mm-hmm. i am ukrainian my wife is russian and if you haven't been watching news uh, these two countries are at war right now yeah. okay so um we have a lot of people on our team and in our church we're russian hispanic ukrainian and hispanic is so like very mm-hmm. different um so we do not say especially i think that parents many times say this mainly so they can communicate in their native tongue especially if they don't speak english really well mm-hmm. um so we understand that but but it's also very important to it's, it's not a i don't think it should be a deal breaker uh, especially if you are around but it has people to be considered. but you do yeah. have to consider it you have to consider mm-hmm. i think you have to consider more the family that you're marrying yeah, into exactly. than even the culture because each culture um, is is uh, already unique, but each family's culture is different. Mm-hmm. You can be a, a Caca- white Caucasian, and uh, their families that are so like education based. Yeah. Then there are those yeah. that are yeah. just more of like, you know, uh, they are not for education. Then there's those that are kind of more into sports, like literally they worship sports. And so, and then there's Russian families. They're like, you know, construction, truck driving. I'm pretty much almost every Russian family is either contru- uh, con- construction or truck driving. And so, um, and so there, there's that component, you know, they all get their cars from auction. And um, so there's a lot of like, you know, women stay home mainly and they have a lot of children. So like predominantly, <coughs> n- not in every case is like that. And so you have to consider, you can't just go in and say, oh, it doesn't matter. I love her. She's Russian. She's, you know, she, she's good looking. And, and stuff, then so. she's going to expect you uh, yeah, to provide a hundred percent for her. Yeah. And because you, you are you, used to 50-50 in your family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For example, huge. like in the, in a yeah. Russian family, like in our, uh-huh. like I'm give you a little cultural uh, like explanation about the culture. Like for example, in Russian culture, um, we, we don't do 50-50. Okay, we do a hundred percent and then zero percent. Meaning Lana gets a hundred, I get zero, <laughs> and so that's that's how we do it. And so, and people, a lot of times, a lot of guys I've seen, they're like, oh, I love how Russian girls look, you know, like they, oh, they're so beautiful and everything. You just don't know how much Russian girls cost. (laughs) Okay. Like this beauty is not cheap. (laughs) All right. And so, and you can't go in and they they get married. I've I've known guys who got married to Russian girls and, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, like they're, they're married to Zara as well. You know, not just, not just to (laughs) me, but they're married because they want to buy this. They want to buy this. They want to buy this. And. A lot Expect of times, you to pay yeah, for it and, 100%. Some, and some, of, some of them, you know, they they will not work because they really believe that in their family, not that they don't work, but they will not work as much. They do see that a man is the leader, he's the head, and he's supposed to provide because that is the kind of a cultural thing that you grow up with. So here you go in, and you're hoping that you know you're gonna get by with a minimum paid job, and she's gonna work in a minimum paid job. And next thing that happens is that she doesn't have it. She doesn't. Yeah. She doesn't think like that. So there you go. You know. So when you step in and you don't know the cultural differences, um, and you're completely oblivious to the to the drastic family culture that they are in like uh, most of us like who grew up for example in america we've been so americanized like our, our cultures are, are pretty similar uh with our friends but still 
taste of food? Uh, what do we do on our vacations? What do we do? Like how you kind of grew up mm -hmm. with that is, 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 is very big. And so um, especially like, you know, with kids, you know, one of the reasons you were scared of getting married to me is because my grandma has 16 kids. So Alana mm -hmm. was thinking that I'm going to have so many, I want to have like 16 kids. And, you know, we've been married for 12 years. We don't have any kids yet. We went to the other side. And so, um, but there's just a lot of a lot of differences that people need to consider yeah. in the culture where um, a person it I think it all depends on how deeply mm -hmm. the person you're interested in is committed to their culture to the culture yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. how deeply they're committed yeah. Yeah. versus like oh they're yeah. a Mexican or all oh, the Russian or they're Chinese or you know mm -hmm. all or like they're they're mm -hmm. um, you know African American you know like the question is that what kind of a family culture they carry and how deeply committed they are to it mm -hmm. and you have to just consider mm -hmm. that it doesn't mean it won't work with the guidelines God, the Bible gives yeah, us yeah. to follow the fruit of the Spirit, yeah, listen, yeah. it will work with yeah. anybody. And even in our case, uh, like if we have children, we're going to be asking a question. Which language are they going to be speaking at home? Ukrainian That's a or good Russian? Question. Right? We need to decide that. They will be Let's speaking do Russian. <laughs> No. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> We're deciding right now. I don't know now, what my dad. Right I don't know. In the live stream. I don't know what my dad's gonna <laughs> think about. It. I'm okay with being Russian. I just, I'm just not like. What about just learning English straightforward? In, uh, you know. Well, that will come. Yeah. As a yeah. But so, there, so yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things. Yeah. You know. I think that's where when you're going into a relationship, consider those things. Consider your values. Meaning, like, you know, um, is when you get how many kids do you want? That's values. Um, when you get kids, um, who is going to stay home, or are we gonna get a babysitter? That's that's values, and you have. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe pre-marriage mm -hmm. counseling is so important. Yeah. Because you gotta discuss all of those things, <coughs> and then you have to ask also um, uh, concerning is uh, the person is more of a spender or a saver? Everything is cash. Everything is credit. How like you, do you, you see money? Yeah, I you, see, you gotta consider. I that. see like, money as nothing, as what they can yeah. buy for me. Because when we were when we were yeah. dating, we went through, we took classes, yeah. and we took yeah. some. It was uh, very good. Yeah, and we kind of found out that you know, for me, money means difference? like. Uh, future security for Lana you know money is a means to, to a goal so it's very different like an example yeah. I would go to store you know and buy something and then um, you know I would first check at the price Lana would buy it because it's high quality and sometimes not even look at the price and so because it's just she views it differently and so and if you don't you know understand these yeah. differences already a lot of them are con culturally but most of them are family based yeah. um, how you grew up how in your you family how your dad is how your mom is mm -hmm. you, you you pick up a lot of stuff that's why I'm, I, I believe in generational curses and generational blessings because that stuff is real you pick up generational things from your yeah. dad and from your mom like sometimes I would hang out with somebody get to know somebody and then I meet their parents and I'm like oh my god you're just like your parents you know even if their parents are not believers there's so much similarities and so remember you're not marrying a person you're marrying a family not only that you'll be interacting with the family throughout your life but you also will see certain characteristics of that family yeah. within your yeah. future spouse yeah. amen Alrighty, amen i think guys it's time to we got finish. six seven hundred i almost don't want to end right now <laughs> we got 734 people watching and stuff so um, thank you again. Uh, please don't forget to hit like. Uh, this is going to be your birthday yeah. gift for me. Hit like subscribe. and go to the deliverance prayer. Subscribe and then share this video with some of the single people, especially if you're the youth pastor, uh, share this with others. And then um, we will try to do some of these more often with Lana. Uh, it seems like Lana told me because last Thursday she will ask me later <laughs> if yeah. I will. Oh, la last thing. So, uh, so we have a store, guys. We have oh, a yeah, store. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We have a store called Savchuk Store. If we could drop in the chat our um, our store link where you can get be still and know and believer the believer. So there's other I ones. Love Demon this Slayer. This T-shirt is amazing. Yeah, same thing. I like this one. It's very very comfortable actually. And so. Um, so we get wear yourself them. a t-shirt guys support yeah, it will and help to support. we will appreciate it yeah yeah so thank you guys so much we really appreciate it god bless you until next, next time, time.